Hi, and welcome to the first of many YouTube videos demonstrating uh, the proper use and how to set up a solar array as well as how to build your own solar panels. Um, I originally came up with some of these ideas to uh, make a profitable business. I kind of discovered that the way I built them, uh, unless I moved on to mass production, uh, started up my own factory, there was really no way to uh, make uh, any type of profit with it. Uh, I'd lose way too much in man hours. I'd wind up being able to produce maybe three panels a day for maximum 20 bucks profit each. Uh, therefore, I decided uh, let people put together their own panels. These uh, ones that I put together might actually be more durable than the ABS ones that are currently sold by many companies. Um, the first thing that you want to do before you even consider a solar uh, array is go through and do an energy audit. You want to minimize the amount of power you're using in your house. Um, water, keep an eye on your water heater and your furnace, whether they're gas or electric. A uh, programmable thermostat for your furnace will uh, help cut down on heating costs. You can lower the amount of heat or the amount of uh, central air you use during the day. If you're not home, you can uh, adjust it so that maybe you let the house warm up a bit uh, during the summer or cool down during the winter and then uh, it'll, the program thermostat will bring up the temperature during the uh, hours that you are home uh, or preheat the house before you get home. Uh, another thing you want to look at is uh, when you get into the warmer months of the year you can reduce the amount of uh, heat you have going into your hot water heater. Statistics, statistics have shown that uh, people will take cooler showers in the summer so you can uh, go ahead and turn down the thermostat on your hot water heater as well, which will help cut down on energy costs. Another thing you can do is pick up one of these. This is a kilowatt meter, uh, trademark name, from uh, P3. Uh, I just picked this up at uh, Radio Shack. You can get them at Kmart, Wally World, uh, pretty much anywhere that sells any type of electronics. And what you do is you plug this into your wall it is grounded, so you can only use grounded, plug, uh, grounded outlets. Uh, plug your appliance into it, whatever you want to measure, and all these different buttons uh, let you check I mean, how many volts, amps, watts are uh, being pulled through. Hertz will never change because uh, in the U.S. here we use a constant uh, 60 hertz uh, AC current. But the most important one is this little button on the end here. Uh, it lets you measure and estimate your kilowatt hours and that is what you really want to get down to. Now each appliance on its own uh, is probably only going to pull a decimal of a kilowatt hour. Uh, little things, uh, I'm using a, drop, a halogen drop light right here which is absolutely horrible for efficiency. Uh, halogen lights create a lot of heat and that's where a lot of their power is lost but it cost me 10 bucks at Lowe's. Um, make sure you switch over uh, from incandescents. There's not a lot of uh, practical uses for incandescent or halogen lights in a house anymore. Uh, even if you have track lighting, which a lot of them use halogen, they make uh, conversion kits uh, to switch over to LED. LED is really the way to go. Uh, the light bulbs that they use can get a little hot just like the halogen, they're still a lot more energy efficient. They'll actually produce some pretty bright light too. Uh, they're designing new bulbs that are a lot cooler to the touch. They're shaped like actual light bulbs. The other type you can switch over to are fluorescents or the uh, curly, flat, curly fry lights. They, use all, they also use a lot less power, slightly more on startup just like uh, overhead, uh, like a drop ceiling fluorescent. and. Uh, you know, as long as you're using them for a prolonged period of time, the uh, power usage levels out. Over the course of about 20 seconds, you're, using, you're now using less power than you would with an incandescent uh, filament bulb. Uh, that about does it for the energy audit. If you can afford it, um, which if you're going with a large array where you could be dropping ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, it really would be worth it for you to hire a professional to come in and do your energy audit. It would not make sense to buy a car, 
nice giant expensive car and then drop a V4 in there, you know, cheap out on the engine. What you really want to do is spend the good money. They'll be, they'll come out, they'll use one of these, they'll use better ones, they'll hook them up, be able to run through your whole house in an hour or two, as well as check out the uh, energy efficiency of your windows, check for any leak, uh, air leaks that are cooling down uh, your house. Uh, you know, it just generally helps out. They can use infrareds and check for uh, thermal uh, heat loss for your house. Uh, here in southeast Michigan, we get, uh, I wouldn't say brutal winters, but uh, it gets fairly cold. Uh, we're just getting into spring right now. Had some thunderstorms last night. Pretty crappy day in general. I uh, figured it'd be a nice day in between classes to talk about uh, solar arrays. So that's it for the first video. I just wanted to uh, briefly go over some stuff. Uh, keep an eye out on my YouTube channel for the updated videos as well as some links to some uh, other uh, solar, some other people who have done work with solar panels. Uh, I really have to give some credit to them. I'll uh, worry about that in the next video. And uh, you know, check it out.